your ability to enter and sustain an emotionally intimate and lasting relationship with a guy hinges on one single factor, the degree of consciousness of the man who chooses you and you choose back. So I thought it'd be really important for me to share the seven most crucial differences between how conscious men date differently from average men and the three essential steps you need to focus on if you want to be a match for and attract a conscious guy. After having literally thousands of conversations with women around the world, I can tell you that the number one attribute women have shared with me with words and with actions that they're looking for is a conscious man. You know, a guy who's insightful, thoughtful, emotionally open, a guy who is respectable, a guy who is full of integrity, a guy who knows what he wants, a guy who is confident without being cocky, a guy who expresses needs and values without putting people down. It's a type of guy who really is present and helps you to step into the best version of yourself. There's two major problems that prevent you from connecting with this type of guy. First one is obvious. This type of guy doesn't grow on trees. It's not the majority of men out there right now. Unfortunately, I'm sad to say this, but that's the truth. So if you are going around and connecting with men who are emotionally immature, who are really stuck on a win-lose type of situation, very stuck on patriarchy, where they want things that are good for them selfishly, but they may not be good for you and their way or the highway. Maybe these are guys who are not fully into commitment. They're looking to spread their seed around and not necessarily to just one woman. So if you encounter this, well, that that's a lot of what's out there. It's not all that's out there, but let's be clear. A lot of guys show up this way. Second challenge, which is much more within your control of why this doesn't happen, not connecting or attracting conscious men, is because men Many women waste exorbitant amounts of time with men who are playful, charismatic, who are suave, who are ultra confident, even though they're hiding insecurity. And the emotional intensity of that connection prevents them from seeing the truth. There may be conscious men circumventing them, but they don't feel that it's emotionally exciting enough to connect with them at the beginning. They don't give them a chance. They waste time with this type of dude who is more of a player and then rinse and repeat the cycle. My intention behind sharing with you the seven major differences between how conscious men date and average mandate is for you to be much more openly aware of how and who is the right fit for you. And the second thing I want to do today is I want to share with you the three specific actions and practices you can step into if you want to be a match for this type of guy. The first difference between how conscious men and average men date is conscious men have a clear, specific definition of what they're looking for. They know their end game. They have a very clear vision of the type of relationship they want, of the type of woman they're interested in creating a relationship with. They have a connection with their values and they know the values they're seeking in someone. Why is this important? Because if you connect with men who are not keenly aware of what they're looking for, that's like the first step already failing to begin with. When you connect with this type of guy, he's going to not even wait sometimes for you to ask him what you're looking for in a relationship. He's going to ask you first sometimes, hey, tell me what you're looking for in a relationship. Why? Because he doesn't want to waste your time or his. Number two, conscious men's pursuit is direct and paste. What does this mean? Two things. Direct means he's not playing around. He wants to see you and he lets you know it. He wants to plan dates in advance. He wants to secure a space in your calendar instead of calling you as a booty call 1130 at night saying, hey, SUP question mark, what are you doing? No, he's a guy who's going to be respectful of your time, who wants to see you. He may not know that you'll be the wife, basically, but he wants to really move things forward to figure out if that's possible. So he's going to pace himself in dating. That also means he's not going to ask you to date him 15 times on the first week. He's not going to have seven, eight, nine, ten hour dates where he expresses himself profusely, even though you don't really know each other. He's going to pace himself, but he's going to be very clear that he wants to get a chance to connect with you to find out if you and him can be an item, and ideally an item that can stand the test of time. Number three, in the process of pursuing you, he's going to ask you insightful, thoughtful, emotionally provoking questions in the best of ways that allow him to get to the truth of who you are. Because he's hungry to get to know you, because he doesn't have time to waste, because he has high standards, he's not only going to ask you fun, playful questions that make dates fun without the depth or sustenance of more. Just like I ask you and invite you to ask guys powerful questions, this type of guy is going to ask you the types of questions. He's going to be open to receiving the questions you ask him and answering them in a way that's thoughtful. He's going to want to go the distance emotionally, which leads me to my next point. The fourth difference in conscious men and average men is for conscious men, emotional intimacy is a must. It's a non-negotiable. 
So good news and bad news. The good news is he's the kind of guy who wants to go deeper, who wants to be more vulnerable with time, who wants to hold space for you to be vulnerable. The bad news is if you're used to not doing that, pacing yourself through expressing vulnerability, if you're used to being highly ultra independent in such a way that it's hard for you to express emotions because you feel like they may be intruding in your personal space, then he's not really going to be excited about that. He might ask you once or twice to go the distance, but if he notices that you're not the type of woman who wants to be vulnerable and expressive, he might just turn his vistas to a different human being. Now, before I share my last three points, which are really important for you to be aware of, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware or perhaps not even aware at all of the true root cause while you're still single. You might be aware of the symptoms, but the root cause is really the thing that can help you change things. So if you want to understand the number one reason you're still single, I've created a quiz after working with women for 13 years and put together a very simple process. If you're interested in finding out the answer to the elusive question while you're still single, you can go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds, you'll have the answer to two things. Why you're still single and a custom report that will share with you based on your specific blind spot. What is the number one thing you can do if you want to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth difference between conscious men and average men is their ability to pace through physical connection. That doesn't mean they don't have needs or even urges to create physical connection, but they will want emotional connection first and they are more than willing to be patient with you as you understand their compatibility with you before they start pushing for physical connection. If they push for physical connection and you say no, instead of getting upset, instead of leaving the room, metaphorically speaking, they'll want to understand the type of safety you need for them to be able to create that connection. Also, because this type of man values emotional connection, you will be higher up in his book, not as a gimmick, but if your honest self says, I need more emotional connection and compatibility before we can physically connect, kiss, make out, and of course have sex, then you'll be higher up in his book. If he's not a conscious man, that will drop you in his book. That's a clear litmus test. If you set a boundary that sets you up for safety. Men who are conscious understand that the vast risk in a dating situation right now, especially at the beginning, is on the side of women. You have a higher risk emotionally, physically, even sexually. So if he understands that and he's willing to wait, that gives you a cue that he's emotionally aware and you should date him. If he's a guy who gets really upset because he's kind of wanting a 50-50 type of risk when the risk is higher on you, then he's not the guy for you. The sixth difference between conscious men and men who are average is their ability to express needs kindly yet firmly. What does that mean? They can set boundaries. That means they can share what they would prefer and what they would like. They're not second guessing themselves. They're not being forceful. They're not saying you must do this or else but they're also saying, hey, here's something that works better for me. Here's something that I prefer. Here's something that makes me feel more appreciated. Here's something that makes me feel more accepted. Would you mind filling the blank? Seventh difference between conscious men and guys who are players or guys who are average is their ability to respectfully and kindly walk away. When a man encounters someone who is kind of connected to drama, who is not willing to do her share, who is wanting to simply have the guy do everything for her without her doing anything or expressing anything, almost like you don't deserve me, that type of experience, guys will walk away from them. Even if you're smart, if you're beautiful, if you're high value, but if you're acting that way, guys who are conscious will not stand for that stuff. Now, what do we do from here? I'm going to share with you three simple things you can practice starting immediately that will up your chances exponentially to attract and be a match for conscious men. Number one is only date men who clearly know what they want. There's going to be a high degree of excitement on men who are physically attractive, who are doing great things in life, and who are showing up in a way where you feel emotionally validated. If those guys are ambiguous or unclear or not sure of what they want, do yourself a favor and regardless of how awesome you think he is, multiply them times zero and that's their value in your life and move on. Number two is go up in your needs, meaning you're going to connect with guys sometimes that feel exciting but are not really good for you. Going up in your needs mean make sure that you open up the space for less emotional intensity at the beginning so that you connect with a guy and you can find out who he really is. If you connect with a guy and there's explosions of the heart and you feel like 
he's really someone that you've met in three past lives, maybe not the best guy for you. I'm not saying that for sure it isn't, but you need to make sure to validate that through time and not get caught up into something that is emotionally impulsive or addictive, but allows you the space to view him. Give him more time. You don't have to have explosions of the heart from the first moment to find that a guy is an incredible guy. If you date him a few times, you don't feel anything, then stop dating him. But you might find yourself feeling more attracted as the emotional connections had seen. And the third recommendation I have is be more direct. Stop playing games consciously or unconsciously. If you want something, ask for it. If you're upset, let him know in a kind way. Don't have this mindset where if he is the guy of your dreams, he should already know he should read your mind. Guys are not mind readers. And guys who are mind readers perhaps are not the best type of guy to connect with you because they may get something wrong but still think they're right. So my suggestion for you would be be direct, be clear, express your voice more frequently than not, give him the short version of the story and allow him to step up or step down. Hope this is helpful, useful and insightful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. Why? Because this is how I can reach more women. The more women who like the videos and subscribe, the more I can reach other women who are in need. Uh, that's how YouTube works <laughs> these days. If you're interested in figuring out how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.